Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to National 5 Chemistry. I'd like to talk today about redox and electrolysis because they follow on nicely from my last video concerning uh, metals. If you're wondering why this is all previously drawn out, because my phone decided to pack in three minutes into the video. Very annoying. So let's hope it doesn't do it again. Redox. Uh, what's redox? Redox is a combination word of two other words, reduction and oxidation. These two words describe the movement of electrons. That's why electrons and electrolysis and redox all go together. They're all to do with the movement of electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. So, so when something gains electrons, we say there's a reduction going on. In case you're wondering why that seems to be counterintuitive, I will explain it. Oxidation is a loss of electrons. And we put these two together to form redox. And there's also this little memory thing where we say oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. Lovely. In the same colour code here, we've got two examples. We've got silver ions gaining electrons to form silver atoms with no charge, of course. And we have magnesium atoms with no charge here uh, going to lose these two electrons and form Mg2 plus Aq ions. Uh, now, how would you know a given reaction? How would you know if it was oxidation or reduction? Well, it's very simple, folks. You look at whichever side of the arrow you find these guys here. If you find electrons on the left of the arrow, then they are joining up with your reactant. In other words, this is gaining these electrons. And if you find the electrons on the right of the arrow, they used to be attached to here, and they have been plucked off. So they have been removed. So this, when you find them on the right-hand side of the arrow, it's an example of oxidation. If you find them on the left of the arrow, it's an example of a reduction. Now, the SQA are very keen for you to be able to do this. They want you to be able to join an oxidation and a reduction. These are what's called half reactions or ion-electron equations because they involve ions and electrons. And the SQA want you to know how to join these two together, squash them together and form the overall reaction for this. So what's going on here? This is our reduction um, where the electrons are on the left of the arrow. So we've got two H pluses gaining a couple of electrons and forming hydrogen gas. And this is our oxidation. Sodium is losing a single electron here and forming sodium ions. Now, the clue, the rule here is you have to have the same number of electrons being gained as being lost. And I'm hoping at this point you can see that is not true. So we can't squash these together until that is the case. We're gaining two electrons here, but we're only losing one. Um, so we need to fix that situation. And the easiest way to fix that situation would be to multiply this entire equation here by two. Let's multiply everything by two, and that will give us our two electrons. So let's multiply all the little terms by two. Wonderful. Now, two being lost, two being gained. What we can do now is we can just squash everything together on this side of the arrow and everything together on this side of the arrow with one important exception. So we've got two H pluses um, reacting with two sodiums to make two sodium ions, one plus ions, and an H2 molecule. Now, you might have noticed I have not made a mistake here. You will lose your marks if you include the electrons. So don't show any electrons. The reason it's because a bit like maths, two electrons on this side, two electrons on this side, they cancel out. That is the overall reaction there. Let's look at a slightly more complex one. Okay. Now let's have a look at this one here. Now, this is, uh, at first glance, a slightly more difficult one to do because we've got aluminium being uh, oxidised to aluminium 3 plus by losing three electrons. You notice, by the way, I put the state symbols in here and being slightly more professional. Although I think in almost all cases for the National 5 past papers I've seen, they don't worry too much about state symbols at National 5, but it's good practice to put them in if they've given you them, like I have here. Now, if you catch your minds back, you will see the problem. Two electrons are being gained, but three are being lost. Now, you have a choice here. 
you could multiply the bottom equation by one and a half because two times one and a half is indeed three. Many people don't seem to like fractions. It freaks them out a bit. So what you could do is you could try and make these two equal number of electrons, which is what we have to do. And I'm hoping you could perhaps see that if we bring them both up to six, then we can combine these two equations together and form the overall reaction. So if we multiply the top equation by two, we have two aluminiums here, two of these, and this becomes six electrons. And if we multiply the bottom equation by three, we'll have three of these, this becomes six, and we'll have three of these. Ah, now we have the same number of electrons being lost and gained. Everything's wonderful. Let's take everything to the left of the arrow and everything to the right of the arrow. I see everything, but you know the story by now. It's going to be two aluminiums plus three copper ions makes three copper solid, three copper atoms, and two aluminium three plus ions. Once again, these sadly don't get invited to the party. You put them in, you lose marks. One last thing just before we leave redox behind is the SQA exam questions often ask you, they show you a reaction between a couple of things and they ask you to write down the ion electron equation, that's these, for the oxidation or the reduction. And they're actually all in the data book pretty much most of the time. So they're already here. The only limitation is these are all written as reductions. So what the SQA love to do sometimes is give you, they say this one here, for example, this reaction here, but they ask you to write it as the oxidation. So this way around is the reduction. So simply take the whole equation and flip it around, folks. So that would be Fe solid to make Fe2 plus Aq and two electrons. So the answers are often on this page 10. Page 10 has been used for multiple things uh, in these topics. And it is very, very handy. Just remember, these are all reductions. And if they ask you to do the oxidation one, just flip the equation around. Let's have a look at electrolysis now, and then we can finish off. Right, let's take a look at electrolysis, otherwise known as electrolysis. Lysis, by the way, is Greek for breaking apart something. In this case, we're using electricity. So the definition of electrolysis is that you are breaking apart a compound in chemistry using the power of electrons, or electricity, actually. This time... Don't confuse this with the cell, by the way, from previously. This is not you making electricity. This is you using electricity. So this is a power supply or a battery. And what they do is they pump electrons around the place. They fire them out of their negative terminals into here. So this is the negative rod. It's negative because it's got loads of excess electrons. That's going to be important in just a second. This is the positive rod. And it's positive because it's short of electrons. It's missing electrons because they have been vacuumed up here into the power supply. That's what power supply does, of course, as I just said, moves electrons around the place. It's like a pump for electrons. Right, so what? Well, here we've got um, copper chloride dissolved in the water. Copper chloride is ionic, so there are copper ions and there are chloride ions floating about in the water here. What is going to happen? As soon as you turn on the power, well, the copper ion is going to see this big positively charged uh, rod sticking into the water. By the way, these are often made of carbon. These are carbon rods because carbon is nice and unreactive, uh, but still conducts electricity. It's the only non-metal that does. Come back at higher and we'll tell you why. So where was I? The copper ions are going to drift over here towards this rod. Why? Oh my goodness, it's late at night. Get it right here. The copper ions are going to drift over here towards this rod. <laughs> Wonder if you can work out why. Positively charged ions, negatively charged rod. The chloride ions, I shouldn't try and think ahead. They are going to drift over here to this rod here because negative and positive opposite charges attract. Well, so what? If you have a remember earlier on, I said there are extra electrons on here. What these electrons are going to do is they are going to actually, once this touches, once this copper 
touches against the side of the rod here, the electrons will jump onto here and neutralize that charge and we are now left with a copper atom with no charge. If you keep doing that over and over again, you will eventually cover this rod in a layer of copper metal. On this side, the chloride, once it touches the rod, the chloride has an extra electron, it's negative. The rod is short of electrons, so the chloride, that is going to jump into the rod and get vacuumed away up here to the battery. We're going to lose that charge and you're gonna start sticking chlorine atoms to this rod. Now, chlorine doesn't survive as individual atoms. It's a hop wrinkle, which is why I have overlapped them as little pairs. So you'll make chlorine molecules. In other words, you'll find bubbles of chlorine gas at this electrode, and you'll find a layer of copper metal on this electrode. That is electrolysis. We had this compound called perchloride. We have ripped it apart to make copper and chlorine. If we have a look at the uh, ion electron equations for these two reactions, what goes on with the copper? Well, it starts as two plus, it gains a couple of electrons, and it forms copper metal. These were dissolved, and these will be solid. If you were paying attention from my last video, you'll remember that electrons on the left of the arrow represent a gain of electrons, so this is a reduction reaction. Uh, and the other equation here, by the way, you can also get these equations from here. If you have a look at this, there's the copper plus two electrons makes copper. This is a reduction as it's written here, so that's okay. Over here at this terminal, you're gonna get an oxidation. So if we try and find our chlorine reaction, it should be in here, there we go. Just beware that it's written as a reduction here, so we're gonna flip that round. So we're gonna have two chlorines reacting to make two chlorides, sorry, my apologies, a negative charge, reacting to make one chlorine and two electrons. So the oxidation reaction will be that's a gas and two electrons. So that is the oxidation reaction. One more thing that I want to say before I leave this behind. You notice I put DC power. That isn't just because I'm a fan of ACDC's music. That stands for direct current, and it means the electrons only ever flow in one direction. If you're not a physics person, you're probably thinking, well, duh, what's the other option to that? Um, and I'm not going to explain it here. You can go and ask your physics teacher. But in chemistry, we hate the other one, and we love DC because it does the job for us. Um, because the electrons only flow in one direction, that means that this rod here is always negative, and this rod here will always be positive. I'd like to cover one more thing, which is actually something I missed out from my last video, which is we're going to throw you back for a second to electrochemical cells. I'll put a link up here to the other video if you haven't seen it yet. These are unusual cells because these are the cells involving non-metals. Uh, there's two things I'd like to just tag on to the end of this. I'd also like to tag on, now that we know about redox, um, can we work out which of the two metals in a cell is being oxidized and which of the two metals is being reduced? So which metal is oxidized? and which metal is reduced. It doesn't have to be metals, actually. It can be non-metals, as we're about to see. There are a few oddballs in here. Yes, these are all metals here, but if you have a look, for example, I got the chlorine there, and there's iodine, and there's a few other oddball non-metals kicking about in here. And you can, in fact, have a cell involving non-metals. I think what I'll do is I'll do something like this we'll have a porous separator in the middle. I think my iron bridge in the last video I showed in purple. So let's say that is our iron bridge, which is some sort of porous separator, keeping the two halves of the cell apart. And then we're gonna have, now, previously, 
these lines here were metals, but there are no metals here today. So this is just an electrode. It's a carbon rod. Again, carbon rods are really handy for this. And this is not electrolysis, so we're back to actually measuring the electricity that we're generating. We're actually, gen this is a battery, this is a cell. And I think on one side, what we'll have is we'll have um, a mixture of iodine and iodide. And on this side here, we'll have a mixture of chlorine and chloride. This is how the SQA tend to represent it. And the question here would be, which direction, uh, well, the starter question is, which direction are the electrons flowing in? Are they flowing from here to here or here to here? The really good news is, despite the fact there are no metals here, we use the same rule. I said electrons flow like waterfalls down here. So if we find iodine and if we find chlorine, then electrons will flow from that direction there, from the iodine to the chlorine. So in this case, it's from right to left. That is the direction the electrons will flow. And the other thing that I said I was going to try and figure out was which of the metals are being oxidized and which are being reduced. Let's for a second go with a slightly more conventional uh, layout. Let's say we've got Magnesium and copper. Again, separated out into the two halves with some sort of iron bridge. Let's pretend this is a sheet of paper or something else in the centre here. Voltmeter. Now, magnesium is considerably higher up than copper. Magnesium is here. Copper is here. I hope that was in shot. Was it in shot? Yes, it was in shot. Good. So the electrons are going to flow from the magnesium to the copper. The copper is sitting in copper ions. The magnesium is sitting in magnesium ions. Now, if electrons are being produced here, this means that this substance here must be losing the electrons. It's letting them go. Set your electrons free. Free the electrons. In other words, we're actually going magnesium to magnesium ions. The electrons here are on the right-hand side, which means this is an oxidation. So the higher up metal here is being oxidized. And the electrons flow over here and join up with these copper ions. So that is a gain of electrons. So that, actually, as it's written, is correct for the lower down one. So this is a reduction. And this is the way it always works. The higher up metal is being oxidized and the lower down one is being reduced. That was one extra little refinement of electrochemical cells, but I couldn't really cover that until you knew what reduction and oxidation were. Which reminds me, where was my list? I didn't really have a list of outcomes today, did I? That's shockingly unprofessional. I thought I had one, excuse me. I did. I wanted you to know about redox and electrolysis, uh, and the extra thing is a refinement, so more details on cells. So redox, these two terms here, electrolysis, that's you ripping apart a compound, using the power of electricity and turning the compound into its free uh, elements. That involves a reduction and an oxidation. The reduction happens at the uh, negative electrode. So this is where you're finding reduction happening and the oxidation is happening at the positive electrode. Uh, lastly, I wanted to refine the knowledge of cells and the fact that the higher up there we go. the higher up substance is getting oxidized and giving its electrons to the lower down substance and lastly i wanted to throw in the possibility that you can have cells using non-metals 
uh, it's, and it still works exactly the same way. The electrons flow from the higher up to the lower down. And technically speaking, this would be oxidation. So we'd actually need to flip that one round and we'd keep that one as it stands. The other thing we covered today, of course, was how to join an oxidation and a reduction ion electron equation together. Uh, that was the story where if you have a different number of electrons, you can't join them. So we needed to multiply this top equation here. In this case, for example, multiply this by two. Now we can squash everything on the left together and everything on the right, with the exception, of course, of these. We don't show the electrons. Otherwise, you lose marks in the overall reaction. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.